Hey, this is Aaron, the Metal Theologian. Um, so this is kind of like a, just what I've been listening to video, kind of a nothing video, really, but uh, just some shit that's out. It's kind of an assortment. It's about half metal, actually, because I'm coming off a big metal kick. But I started listening to a little bit of other shit, too. So, yeah, I'll just see what's in the stack here. Uh, I kind of glanced through it, but uh, first, uh, I might get surprised in there, too, as I'm getting that. Um, so in the spirit of Halloween, seeing how it's close to Halloween and all, We've got this horrific Jones cane sugar soda. And this is uh, the blood orange that will haunt you forever. Which is why it's okay that I can drink it like a couple days before Christmas because uh, it's a scary, delicious treat from the folks at Jones and it will haunt you forever. We're still months away from Christmas, bub. What? We're still months away from Christmas. Alright, so anyway, we're gonna give this a shot. Spencer's sick, so he has to get a little bit out of the glass. God, fucking screw off cap is too much for me. Did you shake this or something? No. It's embarrassing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, a little metal theologian behind the scenes. We actually needed to buy that bottle opener because he doesn't... He needs that much leverage because otherwise he doesn't have the strength to open the bottles. It's really a shame. I just hate getting those paper cuts on my fingers to get. This is, uh, I should put you some before I backwashed in here. Whatever. Ugh. I'm yeah. so mad. I don't know if you're gonna like it. You know, I this love is kind blood of orange like, soda. Yeah, this is kind of more like sun kissed than I expected it to be. <laughs> Tastes more like sun kissed than blood orange soda. Yeah. It's not very bloody. You know those, um, those San Pellegrino blood orange ones? Those really taste like They're blood incredible. orange soda, yeah. This is kind of, there's nothing wrong with it, but it just kind of tastes like an orange soda, so. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't think it it's very haunting. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, it does have sugar, but. Anyway, so, um. I'm sick of getting fucking copyright like ads on my videos. I got one from fucking Focus on my last video, and I didn't even like them particularly. And now I'm really kind of. Got one from that so. weird op. I'm trying to remember where it's from. Zimbabwean band. Yeah. So um, this time we're listening to Survivor. It's, uh, it's a band from Louisiana. It was actually recorded in Dallas, but uh, I don't know what part of Louisiana they were from. But if they're from Shreveport, they're closer to Dallas than New Orleans or whatever. So it's all your pretty moves. And it's like 1979, I think this thing is. Yeah, all songs 1979, so it's a really cool record. I haven't played it a whole shit ton, but uh, it's like right sort of on that border between like hard rock and like really sort of the more stylized metal, so it's a good listen, it's pretty cool. And I actually busted this one out before. I just sort of came up in conversation with Greeno and uh, Mr. Bizarro a little bit. And, uh, this is actually Charlie Daniels, man. I'm actually going to open this up because this cover is so good. This got reissued with a different cover. This is his second uh, record. Look at that. Just feast your eyes on this guy. And look at this gatefold, too. But this record is like a new shit, like, southern rock record. With, like, the emphasis on the rock. This is a pretty far cry from, like, that devil went down to Georgia shit. Um... It's kind of happy when it's happy, but there's a tune on here that sounds like a fucking Alice Cooper ballad, too. Uh, Black Autumn, I think it is. And a couple of these songs really rock, too, you know? So, uh, I don't know, I really love this record from start to finish. And it's funny, because I have his first and his third records, and neither of them does it for me like this one, so... And I don't know, man, that's one that I like to pull out periodically, and uh, it was time. This is a secret oyster record. I think that's a fantastic band name, Secret Oyster. And check out that mustache right in the middle there. He's getting a trading card. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these guys, I think they were Danish. I'm trying to check real quick here. 
But yeah, recorded in Denmark. This is a U.S. pressing mill, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, totally. And uh, this is like total prog stuff. It's uh, in fact, this thing is instrumental. This record, I think, completely. Let's put this one. I don't remember any singing on it when I was listening to it earlier this afternoon. Um, it's good. It's not the best thing ever to come out of Europe. It's not the best thing ever to come out of Denmark. But um, it's a cool record. It's worth a listen. I mean, they're called Secret Oyster. I mean, what the hell, you know? It's a record I bust out from time to time. All right, here's kind of a cool metal one. This is an EP. Uh, this is uh, the Zen Venom record. This is an Australian band, and this is from... Uh, 1988, uh, from another planet. Gotta love yin and yang dragons, right? I mean, how can you argue with that shit? Um, this one has a little bit of a punky edge to it that I couldn't quite put my finger on. And then I realized that the uh, singer kind of sounds like he could have come from a Cleveland punk band. And then I realized that the reason that he sounds like he could have come from a Cleveland punk band is because he was kind of doing a Lou Reed, the way he like delivers the vocals. So this is kind of an unusual record. If that sounds really off-putting, then you, know, you might want to stay away from it. But these songs rock. This is unashamedly a metal record, but the vocalist gives kind of an unusual sort of feel, you know? Sort of like that southern rock vibe you get from the Street Child record, but just like going in a completely different direction. Here's another record um, that I almost never play, but you know, it's funny. When I do play it half the time, it really hits the spot, and the other half I think it's a piece of crap. I played this the other day and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's the only Pat Travers record I have. Uh, it's kind of funny when they say Pat, you know, it's a Pat Travers band. They're here to kick your ass. But um, pretty much straight ahead, just like rock stuff. It sounds like about '79, which is what it is. And um, not bad. Not like an all-time classic, but not bad. Um, this one's growing on me. I've been playing this a few times since I got it from Chris. Uh, I showed that in the last video, but uh, it's probably the most time I've ever spent with this record. And, uh, you know, Zeppelin, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about Zeppelin because you can do that on any one of those channel. But I'm coming around on that one considerably. Now, this is a bigger stack than I realized, man. It's taking all the get through, it feels like. First Skid Row record. This is like uh, Gary Moore's like really early band, and um, oh I don't know I don't have much to say about this. I haven't really digested it yet. I played it like twice, but uh, I'm not all there with it. I think I like this one more than 39 hours, but I'm not sure. Um, my appreciation for Gary Moore has grown a lot though. I still don't like his solo records. Is the thing. Yeah, well this one I'm gonna bust out just because the cover is so awesome, which is actually why I pulled it out to play it. Um, didn't quite hit the spot the other day, but overall, I really like this record. Uh, I, when I got into Uriah Heep, I didn't like these John Lawton records. I've come around on it in a big way. I like this record and Fallen Angel a lot. Uh, didn't quite strike me in the right mood, but, uh, I wasn't quite in the right mood, you know? But Free Me is awesome. Keep on riding. Free and easy. Yeah, man, it's a lot of good songs on this thing. And man, that cover is just fucking... First Wishbone Ash record. These guys are kind of mellow. Here, I'll bust this one out too, so they took this trouble with this gate full of foot. Um, these guys are pretty mellow. They were actually doing the twin guitar thing even before Thin Lizzy was. And they don't do it like all the way through all the time. But um, they do have a distinctive sound. It's a really thoughtful kind of band. If I'm in the right mood for it, if I'm not in the right mood, it sound, I get pissed because I just want something a little more balls out, you know? But uh, if I'm in the right mood, you know, it's just sort of a nice record to just sort of listen to and take in and just, like, enjoy the melodies. We've got Grown Man Record right in the background, by the way, too. You can tell that's, uh, I do not own that record. But I like to give them a little plug anyway. Alright, this is a German free jazz record. It's another one that I also pulled out and didn't really hit the spot. So I'm going to have to digest this one some more. This is a Peter Kowald quintet, though. And uh, it's on the Cien Fuegos label, which is uh, pretty much everything they put out is great. But uh, yeah, I'll talk about this one another time, I think. 
All right, this bulldozer record, I'm finding I like even more than the first one. I've had um, on Space and the Tello, Day of Wrath for years and years and years. And it's cool. It kind of has sort of a little bit of a motorhead-ish vibe, you know. But um, this one just seems to have more going on. It's like it's a little bit more complex. It still has that sort of motorhead attitude about it, you know, and it's kind of a sloppy record in a way, but I don't know, man. Aside from like the cover is absolutely brilliant. And so is the gatefold. Um, I just find myself reaching for this one more and more. Here, look at that guy on the top. He's fucking awesome right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, show me that again so I can zoom in on it. Is that coming through? Is that a chain of bullets over yeah. his shoulder? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> it doesn't even like make right. sense. What if the camera went out or something? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I've been playing this one. Scott sent me this one a while back. Scott Waters. This is a fucking really good record, man. Um, I liked it when I first heard it, but I couldn't believe it. And it just blew me away, especially because I thought the first record was so crappy. And let's be honest, man, this cover is dumb, too. You know, this cover never really drew me in. It's sort of like a Sphinx guy. He's playing a stone guitar. I mean, you know, I look at shit like that, and I'm like, that's just fucking, like, dumb metal cliches. And they look corny. But this record is good, man. And I'll tell you, if you've heard that first Blood Good record and, like me, thought it was a piece of crap, don't let that scare you off, because this thing is crazy. It's awesome. Um, I hope I didn't show this one before. This one's kind of hard rocky. It's, uh, sort of, I think, what's it, 85, 86? It's from Connecticut. Yeah, Titanic, then there was rock. I don't see a date on here. Uh, maybe on the label, but whatever. It's a private press, so. It's cool. This is not the greatest thing ever. Like, if you're going to go and start, like, hunting down private presses from Connecticut, I don't know if this is the one you want to start out. Although, the only other one I can think of right off is Sacred Oath. No, there are a few from Connecticut. I'm just not thinking of them. Um, it's not bad. It's uh, kind of hard rocky. They look kind of funny. But, um... I don't know, it didn't make a really deep impression on me, what can I say? This is a record that I tried to like, it was one of those records that I'd come back to once every year or two. I always thought it was kind of boring, but I put this thing on not too long ago and really enjoyed the hell out of it, this fucking Damien Thorne record, The Sign of the Jackal. I mean, that cover looks so good. I may look a little bit wimpy. But they look like, they look kind of dirty. They look like they were like dressed up as wimps, but then they like went out and like got into a street fight or something, and so, and then they took the picture. So I can kind of respect them a little bit more than that, you know. Um, anyway, man, I don't know. This one finally clicked for me because I was just digging the hell out of this one, man. Just the songs all sound good and right on. Uh, I actually sampled it on YouTube a couple times before investing in it. Not that it's expensive. This thing shouldn't set you back very much come across it. It was licensed a couple times and, you know. But it took a while to grow on me is all. How are we doing for time? 1342. Okay, we'll keep going. If you said 25, I just cut it short. This is a cool record. Uh, my favorite Ostrogoth remains the first EP, Full Moon's Eyes. But Ecstasy and Danger is a really cool record and I hear more in this every time I listen to it. I've had this thing for probably 10 or 15 years, too, so, um, you know, I mean, awesome. But, uh, and, you know, the hand grenade scorpion, I mean, that all rules, too, but, man, I don't know, man, I just dig Belgian metal. I don't know why there are so many cool bands from Belgium and so few cool metal bands from the Netherlands, which is next door and has more people. I mean, you'd think there would be comparable, but it's just not. I mean, and I'm not going to sit here and slag the Dutch, okay? Because first of all, the Dutch made tons of great records in the 70s, okay? But I don't know, when it came to Metal Man, I mean, there's some notable exceptions, but uh, the Belgians beat their asses, dude. I don't know why. Alright, this would have been a good one for uh, the uh, 
second rate German metal video because that's basically what this is. Perfectly enjoyable record, but not a whole lot to say about it. It's just like kind of an ordinary German metal record. Kind of scratches the itch and it's fun to listen to, but it's not like this towering monument, you know? Here's a record that's regarded pretty highly that my opinion of has kind of gone down. You know, I listen to this record, I put it on, and I go, wow, that's really good. This is Purgatory from Cleveland. And this is their album. They have in a four-track EP, which I think is better, probably mostly because of its brevity. This, um, I, uh, I put it on, I go, wow, this is really cool, and I'm digging it. And then it keeps going on, and it keeps going on, and the songs aren't getting any better. I'm going, man, this fucking thing is just too long, you know? It's like, if they cut one song off each side of this record, it would probably be a really good record, but... It just overstays its welcome, and um, it's kind of a bummer, man. By the time I'm done with this record, I'm really fucking ready to hear something else, you know? Jeff Hatrix is a really good singer, man. Yeah, and this is not the Auburn Press. I mean, you can see it's the SPV mid-price series. This is actually a Steam Hammer uh, license. Here's another one that I liked a lot more than the last time I played it, Avalon, Live or Die. It's kind of on the edge of thrash, but it's not thrash. Um, just like an old like US uh, American heavy metal record, you know? Um, which maybe I should just put on for a minute because uh, I'm not going to get dinged on this one either. I'd put on a minute of Avalon. record it doesn't get talked about a lot you know it's not that easy to find but it's not one of those records like um, you know the wizard record or uh, Ion Britain or something like that that you know where people are all like freaking out about it all the time it sort of flies a little bit under the radar and uh, as such I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of attention here it's another one that took me a few listens okay I mean I didn't immediately fall in love with this record but um, every time I listen to it, I enjoy it a little bit more. And uh, so we ran out of space because uh, I still need to buy an SD card one of these days. So this is Avalon. Showing it again. Um, all right, here's a uh, Holy Moses finished with the dogs. Man, this got a lot of hype when it came out. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. It's cool that it's German thrash from when it is. And uh, it's a solid band. I wish I'd kept my copy of, the, of uh, Queen of Siam. But um, I don't pull it out very often. When I do pull it out, I enjoy it. But I only play this one probably once a year. So I was on such a big German metal kick. I probably should have pulled this out earlier. I would have gotten more out of it. But uh, I got nothing bad to say about Holy Moses. It's just not a favorite band. This record's really cool. Killing Asylum by Bishop Steele. It's actually a little late for me. This is 91. And um, four tracks, one of which is uh, just like a short instrumental, so it's really three real songs. And uh, especially this side, man, uh, On and On and Lonely Days, it's good stuff. As far as I know, this is the only thing they ever did, Bishop Steele. There might be a tape or something. I pulled this out. This is the copy I've had since the 80s. All-time classic record. I absolutely love every note on this record. This is like one of the thrash records. I mean, I think this puts to shame anything that, uh... Well, shit, what year was this? 80s? 87? Yeah, it puts to shame what Metallica was doing around that time, man. Jesus. Metallica was past their prime already by 87. Omen, Warning of Danger. Got turned on to this one by my uh, record dealer friend in Columbia. I actually got this courtesy of Mr. Doom Hall. And you know something? They conspired to hook me up with a fucking fantastic record. Because this is great. And it turned me on to Omen, which took a long time, but I'm there. And uh, fucking awesome, man. Played this one. I didn't think it was bad. It was a little bit forgettable, though. This is 1990, I think. It's kind of sort of punky as far as the attitude goes, but it is sort of unapologetically metal as far as the actual songwriting and the delivery. So, uh, Sleep with Evil by North Winds is nothing to be ashamed of. But I should probably leave it out and play it again, because I might have just not been right to Now, this record, this is for uh, Andreas, for Sonic Mainliner. 
But I should have put this one on, but I'm afraid I'm going to run out of space again, so I'm trying to rush now. This is the first SDI record, okay? Satan's Declaration Incorporated. You can tell that English was not their first language. They look fucking awesome. This record, about a 6 out of 10 on my scale. Kettle looks like the guy on the left is like their older brother who's watching over them. Maybe, but this guy is fucking lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know something? It's uh, Now I'm checking their names to see if he actually is. No. Um, I don't know, man. You know, it's, uh, it is German thrash. It's punkier than the stuff that I tend to like. It's not sort of stylized in the way that, like, Creator is, you know? Or even, um, you know, like, Death Row or something like that. It's such a weird cover, though, man. I mean, I don't really understand it. But anyway, SDI. I give a shit. And I've been playing the shit out of this, actually. Acid Maniac. This is a really awesome record. Great picture. And guess where they're from? They're from fucking Belgium. It's the Belgians, man. I don't know. Fucking Belgians are just... They're just the shit. I don't know, man. So, if you're a metal band, if you have two metal records, right? Actually, this one is Dutch. <laughs> Now, I, was, I wasn't going to... Was, I've showed this one last time because I had it from Chris. I haven't digested it yet anyway. I wasn't going to talk about it because I'm kind of pissed at them for putting it out on my last video. But, I was just going to say, if you're holding... If they're metal records, pretend this is a metal record. you got two metal records, and one's from Belgium and one's from the Netherlands. Dude, do it the Belgian record, I'm telling you. <laughs> so... Especially if you're making a YouTube video. Yeah, maybe that's what I should say is a tribute to Belgium. That's what I'll call this video. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Avalon's pretty good, isn't it? Alright, well, that's what I've got for today. Kind of just some bullshit. Have a little fun. So, those are a lot of good records lately, though. There's a lot of good shit in here. And, uh, by the way, there's someone I promised I was going to do two inches of metal for. I'll do it next time. I didn't forget about it. Yeah, I just didn't feel like doing it today, so... Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.